Hey, what's up guys? John here. I'm going to paint a scenario for you that's going to show you just how much of a scam this housing shortage uh, lie was that the American people were sold over the last few years. In fact, it's going to be one of the greatest rug pulls of all time. And people don't understand what's going to happen next. So I'm going to paint the picture very, very clearly for you. I'm going to leave all the facts and the data in the show notes below this video. You can fact check it yourself. You can review it yourself. And if you can prove me wrong on just one thing in this video, I'll pin you to the top comment below so everyone can read your information. But supply facts, supply data. Look at this. Look at this information. It's going to blow your mind and it's going to change the way that you look at America. Please hit the like button. Hit the like button. YouTube is going to share this content if you want to hit it. That's fine. If not, whatever. Uh, also, today's video is sponsored by GreatCreditFast.com. If you want to fix your credit to position yourself for the greatest opportunity that America has ever seen for investing, I'd love to help you at GreatCreditFast.com. Now, take a look at this. Uh, the U.S. housing market short 6.5 million homes, right? This was sold to us uh, in March, right? And then we were sold that we're short 5 million homes. Then we were sold in April, we're short 7.3 million homes, right? So the narrative was that we need more housing stock to draw down the cost of living because we're in an affordability crisis. But that wasn't at all the truth. What's happening is now we have 140 million households, 330 million Americans, right? Easy math, 140 million households, 330 million Americans. But now look at the first point, which is retirees, 80% over the age of 60 are homeowners, right? 80% over the age of 60. And 10 million of which own their properties with a mortgage, right? 10 million. And that accounts for about 19% of them, right? So about 40 million overall retirees in America, 40 million, which comes out to about 28% of the entire housing stock. Pretty large percentage. Well, 40% of that is based on social security. They're getting assistance, they're getting uh, checks, they're getting payments, right? 40% depend on that. Well, social security is set to run out in about nine and a half years, nine and a half years. So how are they gonna do, how are they gonna offset these costs in the future? Big question. In general, they're gonna just print money. That's what they're gonna do. And as they print money, the value of currency starts to erode faster and faster and faster, which will push more and more people into dependence, right? Well, as this is happening, 16 million homes in America are sitting completely vacant. Vacant, 16 million, it's a big number. To put it into context, I mean, Florida has a population of about 20 million people and they have about 10 million housing units. So basically it's, the, it's as if Florida and New Jersey, New Jersey has 8 million, a population of 8 million. It's almost like Florida and New Jersey were to sit completely vacant, not a single person was there. That is uh, it's substantial. 21.7 million housing units are owned exclusively by investors right? Exclusively by investors. And now there's 1.67 million housing units that are under construction. So if we look at what's actually happening, retirees are going to have a decision to make, many of them. I would believe 10, 15 million or more will have a decision to make over the coming five or six years. Uh, on top of that, you're going to have a lot of these vacant homes come on the market for rent. You're going to have of the 1.6 million housing units that are uh, soon to be finished construction. What are they going to do? They're, they're not going to have buyers at 3% mortgage rates. No, those buyers now are 7% or 8% mortgage rates, and they're not going to be able to buy right now. A lot of them got priced out. So what are these uh, units going to do? They're going to turn over to private equity. Private equity is going to rent them out. So you're going to have a lot of homeowners in financial distress as the economy changes. A lot of these housing units are going to hit the market. A lot of retirees are probably going to list their homes for rent. And we're going to see a situation where there's a hell of a lot more supply for rent. And the price is going to be a lot more affordable for people to rent than to own. But things are going to start to heat up here in a second. So annual or birth rates down 600,000, right, from 2019 to 2007, a 13% reduction. And a total of 96.5 million households, roughly 73% of the U.S. households, cannot afford a median price home right? Uh, savings rate. Savings rate now is at roughly 2009-2010 level. So people are broke, cost to borrow money is through the roof, and this party is just about to get started. So right now in America, there are 70 million people, Social Security Administration's welfare program, 70 million. 21%, 21% of the U.S. population is getting assistance from the government uh, through welfare program, 21%. This doesn't factor in for unemployment benefits. 
Now what we're starting to see here is this economy is starting to contract and America was once the land of opportunity. People come from the Philippines, from Mexico, from India, from you know, Sri Lanka, from all over the world. They would come to America for a chance to work hard and provide for themselves and their family and send money back home and you know do the right thing. You know, do the right thing by their by their husband, by their wife, by their kids, by working hard and, and uh, providing them an opportunity. But now America is changing. In fact, America is becoming an opportunity that you know was something of the past. So what are we going to start to see? Real wages are going to start to come down in America. But consumer debt is at $17 trillion. We have $1 trillion in student loan debt, or $1.7 trillion in student loan debt, $1 trillion in credit card debt. You have over a trillion and a half in auto loans, most of which are upside down right now. And uh, cost to borrow money and service this adjustable rate debt is getting more expensive by the month. So how are people going to be able to afford it? They're not. They're going to start defaulting, right? Which is ultimately going to push more and more banks into losses. But as this is starting to unfold, they say by 2025, machines could displace about 85 million jobs, but create 97 million new roles more adaptive to new de division of labor between humans, machines, and algorithms. Now, many people will say, great, some jobs will be lost, some, some jobs will be created. But when you're a retiree, when you're 40, 50, 60 years old, for you to go from having a certain skill set that you worked on your entire life to now trying to compete in AI and tech and uh, robotics and engineering and all these different degrees, it's going to be very challenging for most. A lot of people are going to get left behind. There's no doubt. Um, so when you're starting to look at this, what are you going to see here? you're going to see people that aren't going to be able to hold on to their properties. And a natural way, look at Janet Yellen. She says the natural way to diversify. Janet Yellen now says Americans should expect a decline in the U.S. dollars, the world's reserve currency, right? So what does this mean? Are we really in a housing shortage? No, it was a massive lie. Look at what's going to happen with food prices. Look at what's going to happen with, I mean, inflation is about to get out of control. And so and they have a plan for this. Like, this is what the plan is. So mangoes and agave in Central California, um, now farmers try new crops to cope with, right? So the, this is where the narrative is moving forward. Reducing U.S. greenhouse gas, right? This is the timeline. They want to do all these reductions. So you think about this. The narrative is that they need to kind of change the way energy is uh, formed and consumed and used. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it, whatever. Look at what's happening. This means that property insurance will continue to rise because appliances, uh, lumber, uh, nails, everything for your property is going to be shipped on trucks and the cost of gasoline and fossil fuels will likely continue to increase, which will then be pushed onto the consumer. Utility bills will continue to rise, meaning that it's going to get more and more and more expensive. But so will everything. So will this sparkling water, so will this t-shirt, so will this cell phone and my microphone, everything will get more expensive in the years to come. All of which is going to be very, very challenging for most because you look at what happened over the last couple of years. The last couple of years, people are locking in two, three, four percent mortgages to where they don't have equity in their homes. They can't refinance their homes. They have nowhere to go. Um, they, they're locked in. But the costs are just keep, they're going to keep going up, up, up. So people are going to have decisions to make. But here's one decision that the American people didn't make. Look at this new map that's going to be coming out all throughout the farmland, all throughout America. So this new uh, capture technology, this is, all, I mean, you think about this, all of this land is going to start to be repurposed. It's actually being uh, used by eminent domain. They're taking over this land right now. Uh, and this is all farmland. A lot of it is like some of the most fertile farmland in America. And so when you start to remove all throughout the coast in California, you start to remove all this from production. You have to ask yourself, are food prices going to be going up? Because it, it looks like we're going to be seeing a reduction in overall food that's going to be accessible. I would imagine that food prices will likely be going up. Uh, I mean, there's big protests about this now. People aren't talking about it. But if you look at it, it's a big crisis. And this, this, uh, this party hasn't even started yet. If you look at EU, right, 1.6 billion is what they're offering uh, these governments or these uh, farmers. So 3,000 farms. Uh, so this is, I mean, this is forcibly close. Like they're forcing these, these to close, right? And they are the second world's largest food producer and agricultural exporter. So recap so far, technology, robotics, AI could be a problem, right? 
You look at the affordability crisis that we're already in, and the costs are going to continue to rise with fossil fuels, utilities, food, right? You look at the fact that most Americans are negative equity in their properties, and that we were sold this massive lie that we have a housing shortage. So they were overbuilding housing stock in America, right? All of this inventory is going to start slowly getting turned over for rent. So we're going to start to see a lot more available rentals. And then as that is happening, we look at what's going on in commercial real estate. About 2.5 to 2.9 trillion in commercial loans need to be reset over the next two and a half years. 70% of which is held by regional banks, small banks. So what are you going to start to see here? You're seeing a consolidation of wealth. You're seeing massive losses across the commercial real estate sector, all of which will have a profound impact on the US economy, lending, and housing. But as this is happening, look at what's going on with this situation overseas that, you know, the, uh, you know what I'm talking about with Zelensky and everyone. I, I don't want to say certain words, but you get what I'm saying. Look at what's going on here. So they call it the breadbasket. They call it the breadbasket because it boosts the ideal conditions for growing wheat and a major producer of stuff. One of the most unique tourist attractions is, right? So they call it the breadbasket, but look at this. How this invasion further aggravated the global food crisis. So you kind of get an idea of where food prices are going to be going here. So in 2021, the farmers sowed almost 17 million hectares of spring crops. That is more than the area of Austria and Czechia together. But 2022, it's 22% less. So it's the size of Belgium, right? What does this mean? It means there's going to be more people, the same amount of people, fighting over a lot less food. So what does that mean? Supply and demand it means prices are going to be going up. Without doubt, prices will be going up. 99% of borrowers have a mortgage less than 6%. People don't want to sell. They don't want to sell. But Americans use their homes as a bank, a piggy bank. They refinance it. They pull money out of it. You can't pull money out. You got a 5% mortgage rate and you don't have a strong income and you have negative equity in your property. Forget about it. People are locked in. It's the golden handcuff. And, uh, uh, like property insurance, as I mentioned, is continuing to rise. But this situation, 20 million Americans are so far behind in their utility bills. But this situation is where it all comes together. So look at this. Because I, I, I mentioned this website maybe a week or two ago on this site. But I didn't click on one of these. I mean, this is this is very legitimate. This is real. Look at the donors. I mean, the you see this one right here. Like everyone knows George. Um, you look at these companies, like these aren't these aren't uh, fly-by-night operations. Like these are real, real. I mean, they have real money, and real power, and real backing. But look at this company here. So I clicked on this to kind of get an idea of what this is and who they are and what they're doing. There's already 12,772 cities comprising of 1.143 billion people that have already signed on to this, right? So I'm like, huh, that's pretty crazy. Like I had no idea that it was this big. So I'm like, okay, let's look at cities. Like I'm gonna kind of scroll around here and do some research. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, let's look at US, right? Let's look at the United States. So, so I'm, I'm looking and I'm like, all right, well look, maybe there's some cities here. Yeah, 182 of them have already signed on to this pledge. and. This pledge, by the way, look at this. So what we do, it says uh, energy and buildings, right? And they want to, it says about 6% of buildings. I'll read this. So the need for buildings and infrastructure will only intensify by 2025. We'll need to build 1 billion new homes. About 60% of buildings that will exist by 2050 haven't been built yet. That means that constructing a city the size of Stockholm or Milan every week until 2050, a city the size of Singapore or New York every month right? Singapore or New York City every month. But implementing and enforcing building regulations and mandatory performance standards for existing buildings. Mandatory. So how, how is that going to get funded? Maybe a loan, right? They're going to start to issue loans or they're going to... But how are, how are Americans going to be able to afford this? Well, they're not. A lot of them are not, right? A lot of them that bought the mania, they were sold this housing shortage, you know, inflation's a massive problem. I've been warning about this on the channel that this was a huge rope bull. But look at this. Um, look at every 
I mean, I guarantee there's a good chance that you're either in one of these cities or you're very close to one. But look at this. So you have New York City, you have Santa Cruz, St. Petersburg, Florida, Los Angeles, Chicago, Miami, Dade. Some people think, oh, it's Florida, or it's Texas. You know, I'm, I'm safe. Houston, Texas, right there, boom. Philly, Arizona, San Diego. So there's seven pages of this. Seven pages of, we'll go to page three, uh, Columbia, like Columbia, uh, New Haven, Connecticut, Lakewood. You can look at all these. Tempe, Arizona, Salt Lake City, so it's basically all of America, Orlando, Chula Vista. So I'm like, huh, look, click on the next page, next page. You get the idea. You can look at this yourself and see if you're on here yet. But I'm like, huh, I wonder if this is on here, right? Oh, wow. There, some of those have already signed on. So I'm like, oh, maybe let's check their buddy and see if, if, uh, and you're like, huh. A bunch of a bunch of cities are already signed up there. So you start to look at this. You're like, "Huh? They can agree on that. They can agree on 11 pages, right? They can agree on this. So they're all doing that. And I mean, you scroll through here, and you'll see it's like literally every, like every country. Like it's even Somalia is on here. Somaliland, right? The Congo, Zimbabwe. I mean, it's Vietnam. It's all over United States, UK. You like everyone, right? So they're all they're all doing these uh these changes i mean and how crazy this is this because when you click on some of this you're like you look at like food systems they're saying that uh, most of the world's foods consumed in urban areas right when they're saying one third of food is wasted yet many people around the world suffer from food insecurity and remember the game they're trying to they want to combat inequality food is among the largest driver of global climate food insecurity is also one of the biggest impacts right and so you look at their city accelerators that have already signed on to this. Barcelona, Copenhagen, um, Guadalajara, Lima, London, LA, Milan, Montreal, New York City, Oslo, Paris, right? You just, Tokyo, Toronto, you start to look at it. So when people say, hey, John, we're in a housing shortage and you're selling fear because, you know, you're saying that the housing market's gonna go down. I'm simply saying the game has changed. The rules are getting rewritten and most people are asleep. They don't see what's going on. But if you're a smart and savvy investor and you're connecting the dots, you can see that there's going to be massive changes, there's going to be a lot of expenses, and there's going to be a lot of Americans that are simply not going to be able to weather the storm that is soon coming. So if you want to invest in real estate, all I'm simply saying is make sure you are positioned for it. Make sure you see some of these changes that are coming, because if you do, you'll have a much better outcome. That's all I'm saying. You'll have a better outcome than most others that are asleep at the wheel, that are only thinking about, hey, you know, you gotta buy as much real estate as you can, but they don't have any wiggle room. They don't have any way to pivot. So position yourself, get out of high interest rate, adjustable rate debt as soon as possible. Save some money if you can. Put yourself in a position with good credit. Put yourself in a place to where you're learning, studying, reading about real estate or the business that you wanna be in, because everything is about to change. The economy is about to change, and the smart will do smart things, and the rest will stay asleep. What do you think about this? Drop below, hit the like button, uh, add me on Instagram for content I won't post here. And again, if you want help fixing your credit, we'd love to help you. It's GaryCreditFast.com. Catch you guys in the next video.